Good morning and welcome to CT Brandon. We are so glad that you could have us here today. And we have, as you can see, something a little special. We have the ladies panel, girl power, right? And so we have Pastor Everly, Pastor Karen, and Pastor Nikki right here. And we're going to be chatting about uh, the new year. And I would love to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's going to be a great year for sure. Yes. For sure. So, um, Pastor Karen, you are the newest on staff, so I would love to just hear a little bit about you. Oh, thank you, Pastor Nikki. I am the newest. I don't feel new. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my name is Karen O'Gilvy, and we recently moved to Brandon, maybe four months ago, I would say, to CT, and we're moving from the north, um, Thompson Pentecostal Church, where we served for maybe about seven and a half years. We lived there for close to 10 years, and um, I co-pastored there for seven of that time. But even prior to that, in Jamaica, I've been in ministry, I'm going to say, for about 30 years. And that's, that's like a full That's me. my whole that's lifetime, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just just everything. I, I enjoy everything, whether it's singing in um, worship team, um, it's doing kids' ministry, it's teaching Sunday school, um, doing house-to-house -house Bible studies or just going to hospital for visitation, just whatever it is, doing funerals, um, weddings, <laughs> you name it, I've done it in ministry. Um, but it was interesting 10 years ago when the Lord uh, finally just said we needed to pack our bags and we were migrating. I was not very happy about that. I never traveled, never had any desire to live abroad. But we knew that our lives were sold out to him and we wanted to grow, you know, to do more things in, in the Lord. And so he chose Canada and... Um, he also chose Thompson, Manitoba. <laughs> yeah, you two ladies have the Thompson connection. I know. The Thompson connection, like, yes. I feel like everyone I talk to has the Thompson connection. <laughs> it's a great place to be from. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine tropical girl, you know, moving from never seen snow to living in minus 40, minus 50s. And um, yeah, that's where we ended up to serve. And it was... It was a crazy transition, as you could imagine, but we would never trade it for anything, like the experiences, the people we met, um, the opportunities to do ministry. We have a branch in um, four hours north of Thompson. Um, what's that community called again? The next one beside Gillum, beside Snow Lake. I'll tell you soon. <laughs> But we would travel there um, three, four hours on a Sunday to do ministry there with the people in that community. And it, it's just amazing. I, I wouldn't trade it. And we've been on this journey. And um, our kids get to see us, you know, live for the Lord and just live a sold out life, loving people and um, just just being here for it. And so I'm excited for this new leg of the journey, us moving to CT and what God will use our giftings to do here. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think I would say, yeah, as much as you're like, well, I know I'm the new girl, but I don't feel like it's been that new. Like, yeah, you've just, you and your family right away were like, hey, how can we help? Yes. And we're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, you can do everything. You can cook, you can sing, you can... Uh, Leaf Rapids. No, I remember. Yeah, Leaf yeah, Rapids. Yeah, yes, perfect. no, we did feel so welcomed. Um, when we came down, we were looking for a church, didn't know about CT. I don't know how I didn't know about CT, <laughs> did not know. And um, yeah, it just, the Lord just worked it out. And we met with Pastor Amberly and Pastor Michael, and it was like... It was a love connection. It was a love <laughs> connection. I, I was just going to say it was love at first sight. <laughs> That's, it was amazing, yes, and we've we've not looked back. That better was, than 
Better than any of those Hallmark movies. Better than a Hallmark. <laughs> love at first sight. Thank yes. You. Four I months ago. So we are, we're up on our four months now. Awesome. And it's been amazing. Yeah, it has been so exciting. So uh, we're just going to start with a couple of questions. So uh, for both of you, what are your favorite uh, either Christmas carols? Because I know you both sing. You guys did that <laughs> did. amazing duet together. Or what is your favorite part of the holiday season? Favorite Christmas carol or Christmas song? I don't even know. Um, do you have a Chris favorite? I have more than one oh. favorite. <laughs> <laughs> this, my favorite Christmas song would have to be Mary Did You Know. It's a good one. Yeah. It's a I, classic. I mm. love that song. Mm. I, just the message of it. Mm. Did you know that your baby bo or boy would yeah. right walk one. on water and... Open yeah. blind eyes. It's um, just speaking to a mother yes. in you. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I like weird and the obscure ones. Like I like Low How a Rose Air Blooming, which like, like right. Everyone's like, that's a dumb song. They don't even know that Please song. Please comment if you know that. Song. Low How a Rose Air Blooming. Beautiful song. <laughs> Never uh, heard of no, it. <laughs> I like the random old weird ones. Good King Wenceslas is a really Ooh. fun one. I saw three ships. I, oh, excellent! I wow. saw three ships. I, all of those ones. Uh, do you did you hear what I hear? I like all of the like oh, okay. rando kind of mm -hmm. random ones are my favorite. Um, we sang a lot of Christmas carols growing up, not just at church, but we would actually like carol as a family. We'd sing Christmas carols on Christmas Eve. That was wow. part of our tradition. So we're like, I know all the obscure ones. All of them. I'm really good <laughs> at Christmas that. carol trivia. We could have started wow. with that and showed oh, off some skills. We could have. Oh, wow. I would have oh. lost. <laughs> Um, I was going to say Dominic the Donkey, oh. but then I realized that's not a Christmas carol. Just a hilarious Christmas song. Do you know that song? No. Oh, my goodness. So last year, I got to show the Fishers that Dominic song, the Dominic the Donkey. So you guys are going to yep. be blessed. If you have yet to you. YouTube, Dominic the Donkey Christmas song. Say, Alexa, play <laughs> Dominic the Donkey Christmas song. I hope everyone's Alexa just went off right now. <laughs> would be amazing. No. Okay. Uh, we'll get a little more serious now. So, uh, time in ministry when you felt God strongly working through you. For sure. Okay. So, um, I've been doing ministry, like, you say 30 years, like, honestly, probably close to 30 years, too. Like, I've just always been a part of what we did as a family. It was just always part of um, who I, what I did. So, I was with teaching Sunday school, I don't know, 14, 13, 14 years old when I started teaching, and I can remember being teaching. I was teaching the senior high class, and I was probably 17, and we were meeting in the basement of our church, and there was half a dozen of us teenagers, and we were talking about communion and um, what communion was and why we take communion and just the act and what it was the symbolic. And I can remember at that time at like 17 just feeling that there's no other word for it when you have that click when your people you're teaching and you're feeling that anointing and you're mm -hmm. just feeling yes. that feeling and you just know what you're doing is, is God working through you and you know, you're just in your zone and you know, this is what you're made to do. And, um, and shortly thereafter, like within months of that, it was a tragic story. And one of the kids in my Sunday school class, one of my sort of peers slash, he was a little bit younger, but ended up tragically dying. And I can remember being in prayer. It was very, very sad, <laughs> but, um, it was an accident. And I remember being in prayer at youth group that Friday night and just having this overwhelming sense of like, did I do enough? Now that this story is done with this kid, um, did I do enough? And honestly, just feeling God being like that feeling, that sense of like, well done, that as we just carry through in our normal everyday things, mm -hmm. teaching Sunday school, it yes. wasn't anything extra or like, you know, like over the top or like anything like that, but that when we are faithful in our daily things when we're faithful in what we're called mm -hmm. that um that's when he uses us sometimes the most strongly sometimes it's as crazy like speaking in front of whatever but I find that I know that God is working through me the most um that I feel the most secure in my call in just the everyday stuff yeah. in the constant obedience and the little steps and so yeah that would be one for me mm -hmm. yeah good one <laughs> um I would say always just around people. Um, people have always just been at the center of my heart and 
um, my drive just to identify giftings in people and help to develop that. And um, it wasn't surprising that my job <laughs> is about serving people and developing growth in people as an educator. But um, I think my passion is just the word and knowing the word. Um, at the time growing up and having just this deep desire to study and to know more about God, uh, certainly you don't know what you're going to be doing with that at the time. You just have this hunger, you know, and so we, we as young people, we were in Bible college and we were meeting on Sundays after church fasting and praying together because we were so hungry for more. And, you know, you, ju you just don't know that this is just preparation for what was to come in, in what we were seeking after and pressing into God in, in those days. And um, I knew from I was pretty young, a young teenager, that I was going to pastor. I knew it. Mm. I, I, the Lord told me, but we were in a context where as a young girl, you don't walk around saying... <laughs> You know, you're going to pastor or, you know, yeah. you don't even know where. And I couldn't have imagined at that time as a teenager that I would be living this promise and <laughs> this dream yeah. and this desire so many years later. So I do know the time I feel the most strongest and I feel him moving in me the most is when I'm with people and I'm constantly looking for how can I speak more into you? How can I help you to see um, what God sees you as and, you know, to just be in that space where you are now recognizing that I am called, mm -hmm. you know, and I have gifting on me and this is how I want to develop and grow this. And I just constantly want to be a part of that story yeah. in people's lives. So I feel the most comfortable um, in spaces like that. Awesome. Uh, and for me, I think I have seen God most work through me. Um, I mean, it sounds like cheesy because I feel like you hear it a lot from people. But honestly, when I've been, in my opinion, the biggest mess, and then I've seen good things still happening in ministry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've been <laughs> like, God, like, I feel like everything's falling apart with me. Or I feel like, how am I getting this together? And it's when I realize it's not me. Yeah. It's actually God working through me, Amen. and those have been, Amen. I think, the most humbling that I'm like, oh, okay, so actually I'm not the all-star that maybe I sometimes <laughs> thought I was. Big um, lesson to learn. Right? Oh, There's nothing yeah. quite like when you, like, think you have an awesome sermon and no one says anything, <laughs> and then you have one that just, like, you're like, oh, that was mortified. Everyone's like, that's the best I've ever heard you preach. Yeah. And you're like, I suck. I yeah. suck yeah, so yeah. bad. Yes. Okay, yeah. so, yeah, yeah, but I think I've learned in those moments and just felt God, like, yeah, Nikki, like, this is what you're meant to do, and it's like, okay. Yeah. So I just, when I say trust you, maybe actually follow <laughs> through on it that next time. So, yeah, that's been for me. Um, okay, so how did you know you were called to ministry? So, like Karen said, and, I mean, I think your story would be similar to Nikki, I was young. But the difference is I grew up, in like two worlds, right? Like, so I went to youth group at a Pentecostal church, but during the day, or my family, during the day, my family, though, we went to the United Church. And um, so my United Church, my minister was a woman. She was. So I grew up with women in ministry around me. I had no, actually no idea that that was taboo. And then I was in junior high, and another woman minister from, I think, the Mennonite Church, maybe, but it was in for career day. And so... She was in for career day. I think I was in grade seven. And we went to her thing for career day because why not? And I came home and I was like, mom, I'm going to be a minister when I grow up. And I still really did not have a context of this. My context was United Church. It was liturgy. It was the robes. And I kind of was like, oh, I know I love Jesus. And I really like church. And I like singing. So it just seems to make sense that I should become a minister, a reverend. My idea was I'd be a reverend. And I was like grade seven and kind of came home and told, like, I remember telling my mom and her being like, okay, sounds good. But, uh, <laughs> and I mean, kind of traveled different spaces and thought I was going to be a dentist for a while and had a few yeah. turns and twists. But really from that have honestly always known that serving vocationally in the church 
I mean, we all are ministers and we're all called, but I, I've always like had a deep, true desire to serve vocationally in the church context. And I am so thankful that, um, like I have nothing but respect for people, for women who feel called like that or are in a context where that's not being encouraged mm-hmm. and quite often maybe even discouraged and who are still so focused on what God has called them yeah. that Absolutely. I think that's incredible. And then I'm so thankful that now that I see this, that there are no girls in our congregation, if they feel the call of God, that are going to be like, well, I'm not sure this is the right space for me because yeah. they see strong women leading vocationally. They see strong women leading professionally. And I'm just like, right? Like, I feel like, I don't know, like there's women who came before me mm-hmm. who broke down barriers. We've yes. seen it at yes. CT yes. with yes. like strong women before us. And Definitely. like, there's, yeah, I love the fact that like my daughter is never going to be like, can a woman be a pastor? Like that's like, I think she thinks, I think she thinks it's weird that men are pastors. Like, I think she actually, she's like, what? A guy can be a pastor too? Like, <laughs> And I, I do agree um, that it is it, it, it was a struggle, as I said, because um, where I started, we had women that were in leadership but never pastors. Um, so you might lead a department and, you know, that should be the most of the desire directors. you have. Yes. The, the directors. The directors. <laughs> and so when the Lord was, was speaking to me and he was the one that put this desire in me and, you know, started saying, pay attention. You know, I need you in the word. I need you paying attention to people. I need you being obedient to, to to moving when I say move and speak what I say speak, all of that training, it was more or less just in secret. And maybe the closest persons to me would know because you never want to offend by saying to people, you know, this this that's not how we were raised. We were raised say um hearing that your gifts will make room for you and so you need to remain humble and the leader will see you because if the Lord calls you then the leader will know and the leader will come you know and do the whole you're called yeah, right. <laughs> kind of right and so you you live in in that space waiting and um thankfully Even in a situation like that, our church was, most of our leaders were homegrown. Like, we had opportunities to preach. And I remember growing up, I was the only female that was preaching in church. I I was so hungry. And um, I I knew from I was young, you know, that this was what I was called. Um, Just the visions and the dreams and the desire that was there. And I I wondered so many times, how would God do it in the context we live in? Never knew that he would just blow my mind and do it in a different country. Just move to Canada. Just move. (laughs) Thompson Elsa. Just move. Just move out of there. But um, I'm so thankful. You know, I'm thankful. Thankful, I I love to as you talk, Pastor Amberly, about the children. You know that's my passion. Our next generation, those who were gonna be passing this mantle on to, and those who are gonna step in the shoe that we are now in, that we have to do everything that we need to do to ensure that they know that you know Holy Spirit is not looking to see if you're male or female no. when He's pouring out power and anointing and calling on you. He's just looking for hearts that are hungry and willing and if you're not hungry enough he gives you more hunger (laughs) you know if you're not paying attention enough he ensures that you're paying attention and those desires come from him and I think um, as leaders we have a responsibility to even help those who are coming um, tap into those desires and recognize those yeah. callings that are on them. And yeah. so I'm excited for how, how do we do that? Yes. You know, so none of us came here on our own, right? Like, no, we can, no. Like you're saying preaching as a younger, like I was giving opportunities to preach in my little church at 14, 15, who lets a 14 yes. year old preach? Absolutely. Like, but, and like, not just been like, all right, you're on, but like, we're <laughs> like, then Leslie Elizabeth King was our minister and she would, help me write a sermon. And then I was in youth group and at Pentecostal, and I'd come back with these different things that I'd heard at, you know, at Pentecostal youth group, and this is a United Church context, and she never would write off what I was thinking, even yes. if I now 
knowing more, I know that it was definitely not what wouldn't have aligned with her theology, <laughs> but she never like poo pooed it or pushed yeah. it away, right? Yeah. She yeah. brought me alongside Pastor Vern, who constantly was calling us to better and bigger things yeah. as a yeah. bunch of a of a hundred sixteen year olds running around like crazies, yes. and he yeah. would never like never stopped us. He'd just be like, whatever, yeah, do your thing, and just always you just pulling know us that God is always calling. Yeah. He's always, always anointing. He's always pouring out gifts, and so um, as young people, I look for that, and I look for how do we create a space for them to serve yeah, yeah. Yes. where they are and who yeah. they are, yeah. and right, just develop that lead, and you see it in them. You, you see yes. it in young people. And so, I mean, we see it in youth. Like, Nikki, how many do you have in your leadership yeah, team right now? Yeah, I think now? we have, like, seven or eight in our leadership class right yeah. now. And, w w like, one of the things I love about kind of this group is, yes, we could all say kind of we came from spots where we were like, can we do it? Mm -hmm. And then Bob mm -hmm. the Builder, yes, we can, I guess. <laughs> but um, but even more, yeah, from younger ages, people gave us opportunities. And then we all are in next-gen ministry yeah. where it looks like, yeah, what does it look like to use a grade six student that hey do they do it right every time yeah no yeah but do I do it right every time no. No. no and so realizing yeah what does ministry look like it looks like is your heart there for God and are you willing yes and and yes. the rest gets figured out and so I'd love to say to anyone who's feeling whether it's Whatever's holding you back, if you're like, I feel that call, but I'm not, I don't know, I'm not like them, I'm not like that person, I'm yeah. not funny like them, I'm not outspoken like yes. them, I can't yeah. sing like them. Whatever you think is that you can't, like you can, because <laughs> we all had the you can't. Oh, and I feel, and it's just because sometimes like I've spoken to so many women and they come up to me after if I've spoken at a women's retreat or I've spoken at a whatever and they're like, I feel called to ministry, but I'm not, all the women I see are, tend to be loud. They tend to yeah. be big personalities, and these are women who are leaders in their own realms, but are leaders who are leaders behind the scene. They're leaders who are quiet, and like sometimes we skip over that type of leadership too, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we see the upfront ministry, we see the big personalities, yeah. we yes. see the yeah. Yeah. and but like that's not what runs the kingdom. No, no. the kingdom is not grown no. and ran by big mouths. No. It's by servant hearts. Exactly, like and that. there's a space for everyone. Yes, right. And um, growing up, our pastor would say, "There's a place for everyone, and everyone needs to find their place." Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. Is not comparing yourself with somebody no. else because my gift in is not yours and yours is not mine and mine is not yours 100%. Nikki but God has called us to serve in a place and a time like this and um, when we think about the body of Christ you know I'm an ear <laughs> You are the nose pastor. I'm probably I'm the really. mouth. I'm probably <laughs> the mouth. Let's be real. I specifically did not choose mouth. I'll leave her with that. Okay, I'll be feet. I'll be feet. <laughs> right? Like, and the scripture did say, you can't say, the nose can't say to the feet that I'm more important than no. you are. And I think exactly. just learning that there's a place for everyone here. And once we are in the Lord, he will find what that niche space is that he wants us to serve in. Right? Right? We were talking on Sunday in our prayer room, and that was just so awesome on Sunday. But as we were in there talking, we were talking about how God is just calling people to different spaces to serve, and that you will not be in a place that your gifts are not needed. Your mm -hmm. gifts are never for you. It's for the body of Christ. And so if you're here to serve, it's because your gifts are needed here, you know? So yeah. who is it to serve? So, yeah. yeah. I love that. Okay. Uh, I mean, we could probably talk forever. Ever. <laughs> no. <laughs> Everyone's going to be hoping for a part two, right? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay, so lastly, uh, what is your favorite topic or passage to preach okay, and why? you start this time, Nikki. I start. Okay, this is a weird one. I don't know if I should, whatever. So the first one I ever preached on was Ecclesiastes. That was the first sermon I ever preached, which then Pastor Charles told me, did you know the first sermon that you ever preach is usually like kind of the basis of your ministry? <laughs> which I was like, I don't know if everything is meaningless is a good one. But I do love preaching on that one because I love Ecclesiastes that it's the reminder that that when we get so wrapped up in everything, when we get so worried about everything, when we're so because I do this, all the details aren't falling together, and I get frustrated. God has it. Like, the bigger picture is 
under the sun, right? How does it all make sense? But in the kingdom, I can trust the father who knows it all. Yes. So weirdly enough, yeah, it's a weird one. But I mean, I'm kind of odd, so. No, but I find so much peace in that book. Yeah. It's one of my favorites because sometimes I overestimate my own importance, yeah. right? Like I sometimes I think that this kingdom story is revolving around me and my ministry. And sometimes I need that reminder that no, like you're quickly fading. Like you're here, like we are, right? That like this story has been going on forever in the back and it's gonna be going forever in the forwards. Mm -hmm. And we have an important role to play in, but it's a tiny piece and a huge puzzle. And I actually yeah. find a lot of peace in that yeah. because I can put a lot of pressure on myself to, and maybe that's a woman thing, maybe it's a ministry thing, but I feel like I have to do whatever I'm doing. It has to be the best. Yeah. And anything Over less than and above. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, extra. I had someone at camp, summer camp, tell me that they're like, you're kind of extra. <laughs> Like, in a good way, right? I was like, I'm going to take that as a compliment, yeah, but I don't I, think, I think they meant it that way. You're kind of extra, but I feel like, yeah, that it can't just be good. It no. has to be, no. right? Like, no. yeah. it has to be best. And I do see that, like, mm -hmm. at all, right? And I feel like maybe it's, in a, it's a pride thing to prove ourselves, or maybe it's just a personality trait. But then when we can be like, but the sun's still going to rise tomorrow. Yes. The sun is still going to rise, yeah, right? Yeah. That I'm a small piece in a big picture. And that's yeah. just a really beautiful reminder that, yeah. like. And a reminder, like, I can take a break. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it the, is not, the world will fall apart. You. Yeah. <laughs> Weirdly enough, the world yeah. will fall apart yes. if I uh, yeah. maybe take a break. We're a part of those stories, but we aren't the story. Yes. yes. Right? So I think yeah. a lot of times we forget that when we take things on. It's just. Um, what's my role in this yeah. and how am I like we're joint heirs, yes. right like yeah. we're not the owner of any of it yeah but um I find that I love to to preach on anything that has to do with grace mm. and anything that has to do with the power of God like that just gets me fired up <laughs> and um Greg my husband has had to do a lot of translations in <laughs> In services, when I get excited, I go straight to speak in Jamaican patois. <laughs> I'm excited so, to hear that. I'm excited to hear that. So he will sit in the congregation just saying, oh, she meant that. Because <laughs> I'm just gone. But I think um, we miss so many times what grace really is mm -hmm. and the ends and measures that God has gone to mm -hmm. to ensure that we are secured and that in him the salvation that is so big and so wide that we can't even comprehend what that is and sometimes when you talk about messing up Pastor yeah. Nikki or being in your mess, um, it's where that guilt comes from, right? Yeah. Not understanding that grace is so exactly. sufficient. It's covered yeah. that. You know, you can't be so bad that God can't love you. Exactly. You can't be so far gone that his grace can't reach you. You know, and so for me, it's so important that as a minister and as I preach, that that's the word I want to, to have out there that people people understand that you might be in the jail right now but the presence of God can reach you there you know you're Definitely. you're not a write off where God is concerned and and the power part of it is just understanding how big he is you know it's like growing up and having a big brother and you want everybody to know well it, for me it was my big sister everybody needs to know that she is big and bad and she's gonna <laughs> get you you know if you try anything with me and that's how I feel about God you know that power that is just unmatched unmatched in him and even as tiny as we are when the bible talks about our lives is like a drop in a bucket right even though that's what we are we have this big god behind exactly. us and and we know how the story ends right and we know that he wins and if he wins we have won and so just living in that power and that grace that's wrapped up it's just i i love it yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what else to add to that. Yes. <laughs> and I think Agreed. that I found the last little while that I'm gravitating when I've been preaching or like we get, we sit down as a team, as a preaching team and we kind of divvy things out 
when we do that, but you still always add your spin to yeah. it, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's just about God's peace, which is tied into the fact that we're part of a bigger story. And then peace with one another, mm -hmm. that he's called us to live in right relationship with one another, right? That his love is fully manifest here on earth. Like they will know us by our love. Yes. Right, that when we yes. are called, and it's to call us out to something bigger and better. I mean, you if you've been kicking around with us for the last two and a half years, you know that we're big into healthy church cultures and that healthy church cultures create healthy people. Amen. And be that Amen. mental health, be that church conflict resolution, be that abuse of power, things that we've yes. been talking about is as credential holders, but that, and it all stems from an acknowledgement of our place yes. Yes. in our humility that that our power comes through his grace and that we're sufficient through his peace and his joy Amen. and the fruit of the spirit Amen. right because when we understand who we are as christians and when our identity and our well-being comes through christ then we have health and when we are healthy as individuals we can create healthy communities yes. that the yes. world can't ignore that's right and yes. if we want to see right. a world transformed we want to see a community transformed it comes through living right in relationship with God and with one another and by being healthy and be, being Amen. loving each Amen. other. Amen. And so that's just been, I feel like, yeah, that's been, I feel like those have been an underlying theme amongst yeah. all of us lately. Yeah. And um, I think that's a really beautiful thing to create a healthy community yes. and a healthy team. Like I'm not, I, like, I don't know how many times we can say this, but like, it's a blast to be a part of the team here. Mm -hmm. We love being part of CT. Mm -hmm. CT is it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. It's it really fantastic. is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it has been, yeah, just an amazing year. And, well, I guess it's the start of a new year, yeah, right? Happy is. New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we are so excited kind of for what this year is going Amen. to bring now. Amen. Thank you, ladies, so much for, you know, doing the panel thing, whatever this was, uh, with me and so next week, just so you all know, we will be back in person on Sunday. So we would love to see you there. It'll be awesome, you know, to see all our, our shining faces again. And if you've never connected with CT before, that's okay. We have a Facebook. We have Instagram. Uh, YouTube, you can subscribe and see us every week. And so we'd love that. Also, if you're just new and you're saying, hey, I'd like to talk to one of you. Awesome. We'd love to chat with you too. We like talking. We <laughs> we, as you can tell, uh, go to www.ctbrandon.com. Click on I'm new here and fill out a form there. We won't spam you, but we just love to get to know you. Also, if you came prepared to give, we thank you for that. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can do it through e-transfer at info at ctbrandon.com. You can do it through the number on the screen or uh, the office is open. So from Monday to Thursday, you can come and you can pop uh, that, you know, giving as well. And we're just excited. 2023, it's going to be a good year, right? It's going to be a good year. Right? Be and good year. as our yes. lead pastor always says, the future is bright. Amen. So we can't <laughs> wait for that. But uh, we have a couple songs also to show you. And have an amazing Sunday and see you next week. See, see you. you. Bye. Bye.
Let's sing together. There's singing.
Thank you. 